Hello there, everybody! Bonna here, and welcome back to some more RuneScape Leagues. Off camera, we have been a busy little buns, and we ended up getting ourselves level 60 agility, which means that we finished off the Canifus agility course officially, and we can move on to the Sears Village course, which is much better XP per hour, and should help us out with leveling up agility even further, which also means more marks of grace and more money. Speaking of which, we got a ton of marks of grace and a ton of money from that little grind. That golden brick road fragment that we equipped really came in clutch. I think we ended up with about 112k, which is pretty insane. And uh, some of that money I have liquidated since then because I just went and bought some runes. Because starting out right out the gate this episode, I've got a plan where I want to go and kill the nature spirit, which should give us a chance at getting a rune axe. And that's going to help us with wood cutting and fire making and eventually cooking, of course, down the road. So it just kind of makes sense to get that on the account. That way I can be continuing to level up things off camera and not have to bore you guys. Now down in the chat box, I am seeing some red text that says the sage bestows a refund of 55 sages renowned to you. So I don't know if there was like a recent change or something, if they did a patch where there was a mistake or, or what happened. I might have to look into that. So in order to get the rune axe, we have to use fairy rings in order to travel to this certain zone to kill the nature spirit that I'm talking about. And to do that, we have to have a draymond staff. So I've got to collect items from the sage, and he should have the staff for me because last episode we completed the fairy tale part one. So we get ourselves a little draymond staff right there. We're off to see the wizard, the wonderful wizard of Oz. Well, smack my ass and call me a falafel. Okay, time to use the fairy ring. So if we go to configure, I believe what can't get to school now. All right, so I figured out what the problem is. I have to at least start the fairy tale part two in order to use fairy rings, um, and it's not a terrible quest, but it's only four renown points in order to fully complete it. And so I think I'm just gonna spend the renown to complete it off and not have to worry about it, because I really don't feel like going and questing right now. So I'm just gonna spend it, be done with it. Boom. Alright, so under the menu here, we've got a little travel log to the right side of the screen, and this is all the different codes that you can put into fairy rings, and it will basically take you all around the map, but we're looking for a very specific area. I just checked the wiki page to see what the code was for the fairy rings, and it looks like it is BKQ. So let's put that in. And uh, the name of the thing we're killing is a tree spirit, not a nature spirit, so I was also mistaken with that. Oh, look at that, a task! Perfect! 25 points, two sages renown. See, we're already making renown points back. That was totally worth it. Um, I also might need to get an axe, now that I think about it, because I'm pretty sure I have to, like, try to chop the tree, and then a nature spirit appears. Yeah, I need to go get an axe real quick. And we just got a task completion for coming to Xanarus. So that's pretty sweet. I am back with an axe, so that we may slaughter your kind. All right, so the gist of this is, I try to chop down a tree, a spirit's gonna appear because they're super pissed, and then we're gonna run around this fucking plant, and this spirit is super dumb and doesn't know that you can just like walk around the plant. So I can just sit here in safety and mage this thing to death, and this is basically our life until I get a rune axe drop. Now the good news about this is, this is really awesome magic experience, because I'm just sitting here kind of like AFKing. Um, it doesn't give full XP for your hits, but in the leagues, everything's boosted, so I'm getting like 180 XP per cast, which is pretty crazy. And then plus with the rune axe and everything like that that's going to be dropping, this is going to be really beneficial for us to do, so it's worth taking the time to try to do it. So the drop rate for the rune axe is 1 in 32, which means that, probability speaking, I should get this in 32 kills. Which is not too bad, and with all these fragments that I have equipped, I'm saving, like, a lot of runes. I've only used four Chaos runes so far, now it's down to five. That's crazy, because normally each of these spells would take one Chaos rune, but because of those fragments, I'm saving, like, 60% of my runes. And so, uh, this is gonna be really nice. Well, we got an Adamant Axe but not quite what I was looking for. Is it just me, or does it look like this tree spirit is just constantly giving me the middle finger? <laughs> and that is level 55 magic, which is a giant milestone for the account. That means that we now have access to high-level alchemy, 
which means that we can turn items into gold as we're out running around, and there's actually some fragments that augment that even further and give you back more gold than you'd normally get, which is pretty darn sweet, and is another way for us to make some cash as we go. Well, we have officially surpassed the drop rate for the rune axe. We are now sitting at 34 kills, um, but we did get a bunch of nature runes, and I've actually got a lot of extra axes here that I can high elk, because we can now do that. So I'm actually going to cast this for the first time on the account. I don't know if this is an achievement or not, but let's give it a try. Bada boom, it is! Look at that, 25 points. And I'm just probably going to get through and high elk all the things that I don't need, because I've got a lot of duplicates here, and I'm really just sticking it out for the rune axe. I don't really care about the adamant or the mithril, except one mithril axe I am going to keep, because I need it for animal magnetism, which is a quest. But uh, that's probably a little ways down the road. I might even end up skipping it. It just depends on what it costs to skip it. So we'll have to see in the future, but I am just going to bank one myth axe for right now. And we'll keep on this grind until we get the rune axe. Alright, so we're officially 50 kills in, and we still haven't gotten the rune axe drop yet. And my inventory's full, so I've got to go bank. Oh my god, we finally got it. Holy crap. 56 kills in. It took us 56 kills. We are almost double drop rate before we finally got this thing. Good lord. But look how beautiful it is. My god, it was worth it. You are my queen. So we're at the point now where I think maple trees makes the most sense in terms of woodcutting XP. So I think we're going to head to Sears Village and just start AFK cutting trees and burning the logs with that fragment. Because that'll get us a lot of passive XP in the background. Um, after that, I think we're going to go do a couple more quests, because I'd like to get my prayer up to level 43. And then after that, probably some more tasks, because getting that tier 4 fragment is kind of my goal for this episode, and it just requires us doing a bunch of tasks, because we're 440 points away. Um, if I do like the 25 pointers and maybe even 50 point tasks, that's not that bad, but those tasks are kind of difficult, and I don't know that there's a ton of them that I can do. So it might just consist of a bunch of tiny, like, level 5 point ones. But we'll have to see what we get into. I don't know. And that is level 60 woodcutting. Officially achieved on the account. I can now cut down yew trees, which very well might be a task. So there's actually some yew trees right down this way to the south. I'm going to come down here real quick and cut one and see if it gets us any points. Nope. Doesn't look like it is a task. But that's okay. We got a lot of woodcutting levels, and we got a lot of fire making levels, just passively. We're up to 53 fire making, and I've hardly lit like any fires. So that's pretty crazy. So I think I'm going to take a break from woodcutting and start to do a little bit of questing, because last episode I mentioned I wanted to do a little bit of questing to get our prayer up, instead of actually getting bones and burying them. So I think we're going to do the Holy Grail quest because it gives a lot of defense experience and a lot of prayer experience. But I have to do Merlin's Crystal first. And I actually don't know what Merlin's Crystal gives, I can't remember. So it looks like it just gives some quest points in Excalibur, but that's okay. I think it's a fairly fast quest to do. So let's go crank it out, and then we're gonna do Holy Grail after that. Well hello, Castle of Camelot! The wizard has returned! Oh, Sir Mordred! I need you to eat flames! You know, in retrospect, I probably should have brought some food for this. I might actually want to start prayer flicking a little bit here, because he's kind of slapping me around. This is going to be a little close. Ah! Okay, we got it. We're good. We're good, guys. And that there is Merlin's Crystal complete. Next up is the Holy Grail. Two hours later. And that is the Holy Grail quest complete. Two quest points, 11,000 prayer experience, 15,000 defense, but of course the numbers are a lot higher in the leagues. So let's see what we get. Level 50 prayer, which far surpassed the 43 that we were shooting for. And we went from level 1 defense all the way up to level 51. Holy shit! That just saved us a whole lot of training. Um, we did get a task completion, it looks like, as well, because we hit level 50 combat. So we got 25 points for that, two Sages Renown. We're up to 67 Sages Renown, which is kind of crazy. Um, there's actually a couple quests and stuff that I would certainly like to use that Renown on to complete. 
but there's some other ones that I want to do first. I'm pretty sure if you use the renown points to complete quests, you don't get the experience rewards. And I think I want to do stuff like the Grand Tree and maybe Monkey Madness 1 because they give some really good XP drops. And a Waterfall quest as well. But I need to unlock Strength first. As a matter of fact, let's just do that right now. I'm going to pull the trigger and unlock Strength because I know we're going to need it. We have needed it a lot <laughs> up until this point, and we haven't had it. And I've got a ton of round points, so I'm just going to pull the trigger and do it. Let's get ourselves some strength. Oh! Oh, oh, oh mama! So next up on the chopping block, I think, is going to be the Waterfall quest. Because it's very easy to do, and it gives a ton of attack and strength experience, which would save us a lot of time trying to level it manually. Um, this quest is kind of dangerous at low levels, but we have a lot of HP now, so there's virtually no danger to it. We just have to go acquire a couple things. But even those kind of things to get are pretty simple, so this shouldn't be any problem at all. Boom! Waterfall quest complete, baby! Whoo! That is a whole lot of XP. So before we did this, we were level 1 strength, if you remember. And now, we are level 50 strength. That is insane. Ooh-wee! 65 attack now. And I've like barely even trained attack. Look at all these levels just pouring in. Look at all those levels. So I've been debating on whether or not I want to do the Monkey Madness Part 1. It's a very long quest, and it's kind of a pain in the ass. But if I was to buy it with Renown Points, I would not get the XP from it. Which I think is a giant waste, because you get a lot of experience from doing this quest. So I think I'm just going to bite the bullet, and we're going to do it. It's going to take me some time, but for you guys, it's probably just going to be like the next couple clips. I hate this stupid fucking quest. But I did get to become a monkey, so that's kind of cool. Oh, thank God that quest is done. That was actually painful. Like, some people just blow through these quests like they're nothing. But that took a long time. I actually ended up dying like three times to the boss at the end because the ping on these worlds is so bad that I couldn't prayer flick. Um, and then for those of you who don't know, prayer flicking is like when you activate a prayer and then you deactivate it right after the attack hits, and it's basically a way of conserving prayer. But I couldn't do that because the lag is so bad. So I kept running out of prayer points, which means that I kept getting stacked out by the boss at the end. So yeah, like three deaths in, and here we are. But the whole reason for doing that quest was to reap the benefits of this massive XP reward right at the end. So if I talk to Darrow here, I think that's how you say his name, he should give us a ton of experience in the areas that we choose. So I think we're going to go for strength and stamina. I think. Or de we need defense too. Defense would be really useful. So maybe I'll do defense. Or maybe I'll even split it up. Let's see how much XP we get. I have a feeling this is going to be a pretty ridiculous XP drop. That got us from... Jesus. Holy shit, that was a lot of XP. Good lord. Okay, and I don't know if I can do that again or not. It might have been a one-time drop, but I thought you could talk to him twice. But that is ridiculous how much experience we just got. Good lord. And we got a task completion because we hit level 70 in our first skill. That's crazy. I tried to talk to him again, and it looks like it was just a one-time thing that you get to choose there. But either way, that's crazy. We got up to level 70 attack, 59 strength, and 63 defense. Which is just crazy, out of one freaking quest. So, I mean, all in all, it was still worth it. It was just a pain in the ass. So, hitting tier 4 for the fragments is going to be a giant increase for the account. Um, it basically lets us equip another fragment, but more importantly than that, items from sources will be two times as common. Which basically means that when we do some bossing, all of their rare drops are going to be twice as common as they normally are. Which means we can get some pretty sweet gear a lot faster than otherwise. And to get that tier 4, we only need an extra 285 points. Which basically means we're about to go on a nice little task montage. <laughs> Hang on a second, stop the montage. So I just realized that I have to unlock smithing so that I can do this quest. And I don't want to do that like off camera or in a montage. So I'm just going to pause things for a second here. 
and we're going to do this. Uh, let's see, smithing. Bada boom. There we go. Going to unlock that little bitch. Do my little dance. Do my Oh, oh, my little hip thrust. Oh, oh. Okay. And uh, back to the montage. Okay, so apparently I gotta have crafting, too. So this quest is just a complete pain in the ass, and I'm tired of pausing the montage. Okay, so after that sweet little montage, we are only 30 points away from the T4 fragment. I think to finish it off, we're going to unlock another chunk of quests using our Sage's Renown. Uh, I've been looking into it, and I think it's worth it to spend 45 Renown points to unlock this Karen 3. And basically what that does is completes all of these quests for us. But more than that, it gives us 100% favor in every single house. And for those of you that don't know... It is an absolute pain in the ass to get favor in those houses. I mean, it took me weeks, if not months, to grind that out on my main account, and there is no way I'm going to do it in the leagues. Um, and that being said, there's a lot of tasks that can be completed once you have that favor. So I think it's worth it just to bite the bullet and do it, and I'm actually going to get a lot of points back once I actually do this. So I think it's more of like a knowledgeable investment than it is a waste. Ba -ba -da boom Her! Ha! Huh, and there we go. Oh, shit! And that officially got us to T4 in terms of the fragments, which is massive. And uh, we also got a free fragment as part of that. It looks like we've got Chinchonkers. Um, I don't think I had that one before. So let's take a look real quick and see what it does. So Chinchonkers gives a bonus 50% more XP when catching Chinchompas, which is huge when we unlock Hunter. That means we can get a ton of points in Hunter and level it up super fast, on top of the already 8 times experience that we're going to be getting. So that's pretty crazy. Also, the tasks have not stopped being completed. Like, this is crazy. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God's cooking something up for you. So I think for our fourth fragment, we're gonna go with Alchemaniac for right now. Um, that way we get more gold back when we high alchemy items. Which is gonna be super useful because I just blew like 60k on a dragon dagger in order to complete all these tasks, and I'm kinda broke. Yeah, my coins ain't looking too healthy right now. So after all of our purchases, we still have 35 Sages Renown. And I think I want to unlock Fletching and Slayer. And maybe Hunter, but Hunter's not necessary right now, so I'm going to hold on that one. But Fletching, I think, will be super useful. Um, one, because it is a ton of XP that we can get and a lot of tasks pretty easily. And Slayer, because we can start to get some drops and high alchemy them. Give me that Slayer. Oh boy, that's a big one. Slayer's a... Oh! Oh! Oh my god! So I'm actually curious how much Fletching experience we're about to get. I've got some basic logs from woodcutting before, and we're just going to carve them into some arrow shafts. Looks like 40 XP per craft, we're already level 2, so yeah, this is going to go pretty quickly. Um, once we start crafting bows, it's going to be worth even more, but I think it just makes sense to make arrow shafts with the regular logs for right now until we can start making, like, oak, you know? Oak will give a lot more. So after fletching for a bit, I decided that Slayer should be the next course of action for the account, but I wanted to unlock Hunter first. The reason being is that I wanted to complete this mini quest in the game that awards quite a substantial amount of Slayer and Hunter experience, and I didn't want that XP to go to waste. After we completed the mini quest, we went to the Slayer Master Konar for our first task, which was Greater Demons in the Catacombs of Karend. 
After adjusting our relics to give the best bonuses and magic, we made our way into the catacombs to begin the task. This place has basically been my home ever since. The task is quite long and magic isn't the best of attack styles to use against them, but it's getting the job done just fine. We made a ton of progress in this episode, and this feels like a really good stopping point for the time being. So with all that being said, thank you so much for watching! If you enjoyed, please be sure to leave this video a like down below, subscribe to the channel with notifications on so you can stay up to date on all of my latest content, join the Discord for a community of like-minded woodland creatures, and please keep leaving me comments because they warm my little bun heart. Thank you again so much for watching, and I will see you guys in the next episode.